Dade dade everyone! Welcome to our Tuesday Prema Bhakti Chandrika Churning of the Nectar of Prem. Dade! Look who's coming! <laughs> so, today we have a very, very sweet subject, as always. It's about the Yuga Lakishore service. And it's uh, from Nara Tomdas Thakur, his meditations and the purport of Ananda das, An uh, Ananda das Babaji Maharaj again. And it is so beautiful because in this purport, he is explaining so many beautiful things that you will all feel very inspired. I feel so inspired and I can feel that you will feel inspired because he is just making some things so clear that they are very tasty. Yuga la charana seva, yuga la charana deva, yuga le manera piriti, yuga la kishara rupa, kamarati gana rupa, Manarahukili Oli Lakiri You know Naratam Dastaka, he was such a genius that he would write all his realizations in songs. And Gurudev loves these songs, he loves to hear these songs, he loves to meditate on these songs, and he also loves when we sing them to him. May the devotional service of the Yugala's lotus feet remain on my mind. May the devotional service of the Yugala's lotus feet remain on my mind. May I meditate on their feet and may my mind love this Yugala Kishora that are the monarchs, the emperors over all cupids and Ratis, and may my mind remain fixed on their pastimes. <laughs> so this is the prayer of Naratam Das Thakur, and he is with his prayers giving us this feelings how we can also remain fixed on these prayers that may my mind always, you know, remember this, what is uh, the Leela and the beautiful, beautiful exchange between Radha and Mohan. Yugala means yeah, Radha and Mohan when they are together. And that is what he sings, Yugala Charana Seva. It's not only, you know, translation is may their service may remain, uh, remain on my Ranga Mahaprabhu and the, all the his associates uh, worship is consisting of Raga Mark linked to Vaidhi Mark. That means that uh, please also use it down here. No? That means that the Raga Mark and the Vaidhi Mark means the spontaneous emotional worship is also always connected to the Vaidhi mark, means the, the following of rules or following of certain uh, patterns of worship. And the main item of Raga mark, of Raga Bhakti, is Smaran. We have heard this a lot of times. It's to remember and to not only remember, oh yeah, I remember, it's living in the memories, meditating in the memories, and it's like, absorbing the pastimes 
so much so that it becomes a daily chance to always be connected with them, according to my own um, ability, you know, it's different for every one of us, but that doesn't matter, that doesn't count, as long as I remember and try to remember what I have heard. So that smaran is the remembrance, and this is linked to the items of Vaidhi Bhakti, that means such as hearing, chanting, and temple worship. And that is the subject that Baba is explaining in the beginning in his purport, how these things belong together. The smaran, which comes from, you know, memory of what we feel, what we have heard, or what we have been instructed by our Gurudev, by our Vaishnavas. And then also, in together with the smaran, is the hearing, the chanting, and the temple worship, or as we have Takujis at home, our Takujis. We give them water, we give them, you know, they allow us to give, to, to receive, we, you know, they receive from us our little offerings of water, of fruits, of anything that we love to cook and prepare for them. And they accept to be dressed, they accept to be decorated with flower garlands or pearls. All this goes together with the smaran, with the remembrance of those pastimes and leelas and uh, things that we have heard from our Gurudev. And then he quotes Sri Rupa Goswami on this from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, that the process of hearing and chanting in Vairi Bhakti or all processes of 64 items of bhajan, like also taking shelter of the Gurudev, are also suitable for Raganuga mark or even dependent on it. How are they dependent on it? Because if I just follow some rules that I have heard or listened to, and after some time I'm like quite, you know, accustomed to them, I know how to do it, it can become dry if it doesn't be, you know, if it is not filled with a feeling, with a memory of what I have heard about it, how to do it, how to, you know, do it feelingly, and how to connect myself in the service, not only as a worshipper, but as a beloved uh, maidservant, in our case, what Gurudev is giving us, to our Swamini or according to the Ishtadev that we have. So the Smaran is not something that is done uh, like a, how do you say, pressed, uh, you know, printing process. It's something that comes from within. And he says here, Rupa Goswami is quoted from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. We have heard about it in the mornings now, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. He says that if it is not connected, these processes that are kind of like repetitions, not like hearing and chanting, and we do our takujis, we decorate the temple, our altars, we do this. And it should be connected with this remembrance or feelings of the attachment that is growing to it. And if it's not uh, doing this in, in the following the people of Rindavan, it will not yield the re perfection. So that is important to know that why are we doing these things? We are doing them because we want to be a Brajbasi, a, you know, very simple cowherd girl, you know, in a village that is beyond comparison, of course. <laughs> that is like a village from the, you know, spiritual realm. It's not only a village, it's the, you know, highest realm that the soul can reach in this universe. Is there something wrong? So it must be somehow come together. All the processes that we are doing with a kind of a personal touch to it, 
personal touch, I mean the personal feelings that we have. And then it will come to the, you know, to the result, which is we want to feel like one of the bridge bases. We want to also enter the feelings of the bridge bases. Means the inhabitants of Vrindavan who are serving Radha Mohan in different, different feelings. And then he explains that the wise will practice the items according to their own feelings, but do not practice unfavorable items. So there is some spontaneous, you know, feelings that we have, you know, very individual feelings, but there are also items that are not so favorable. And he is explaining that, for example, in the formal worship, the Vedic scriptures may prescribe worshiping oneself. You know, I was thinking when I was reading this, what does it mean worshiping oneself? But the Vedic scriptures, they include all kinds of worship, you know, on different, different levels. Not only worship like in the mood of Vrindavan. It is, this is the, the most like the fruit of the Vedas, as Srimad Bhagavatam says. Daddy. But here we know that also some of the Vedas, they also explain worship of Brahman. Yeah? I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi. This is also some part of the Vedic scriptures where we are worshipping ourselves as divine parts of, of God. And th but that is not compare, you know, this is not favorable, it's not compatible with Raganuga Bhakti. Or it is not uh, favorable when we use mudras. Why? Because these mudras are, you know, like very much attached to the to the Brahminic uh, kind of uh, how do you say worship that will imply but ritual. the ritual feeling, no? Like the many rituals that we have of different different uh, uh, Vedic priests. This is not uh, favorable to Raga Nuga Bhakti. Or he says meditating on Dvaraka, because there it's not our dear cowherd boy Mohan, it's Krishna, he is a king, he is a prince, he has 16,000 wives, it's a complete different feeling, a different bath, a different mood. So, so there are some things that are unfavorable but usually our Gurudev will also point this out to our, us when he feels that we are doing something which is not, uh, you know, really comparable, no, how do you say, compatible uh, in our mood. We don't have to worry so much about it. Am I doing things that are favorable or not favorable? But when I come to Vrindavan also, Gurudev will, will somehow point it out if we ask him, do you feel anything that, you know, needs to be looked at in my own sadhana and study. He's, he will automatically tell this when we ask in a humble way. So that is the, like, how do you say, you know, in this Prima Bhakti Chandrika always that we have this, that another Tom Das Thakur is explaining to us what is the, you know, relationship between the Vaidhi rules, the Bhakti that is, you know, somehow guided by rules, by habits, by formalities, and how to go, you know, into the, into the process of spontaneous love and devotion, how to combine it and what to, how to be careful and what to be attentive on. And here he says, be careful of your worship and make it one-pointed if you want to reach the devotional service of Sri Yugala's lotus feet. So then he goes on to explain. Again, he says and repeats, Yugala Charana Seva, may the devotional service of Yugala's lotus feet remain on my mind. And when I read it, it also seems to be like a blessing. You know, he says it, and he's kind of blessing us who are reading and who are listening. Who they've mentioned this morning, how important it is to listen. 
And also in this purport, it is so nicely explained what is happening when we are listening, listening in a loving, in a loving feeling towards each other and towards Radha Mohan. And he says that this uh, Raga Mark is not performed according to scriptural injunctions, as is the case with Vaidhi Bhakti worshippers. But their worship is driven by sacred passion and sacred greed. Therefore, the flow of their bhajan, consisting of hearing, chanting, remembering and worshipping the deity, continues with the mind filled with love for the most favorite Sri Radha Mohan. In this way, their each and every item of worship will remain very juicy and honey sweet. Juicy means it is, it's liquid, it's full of emotions, it's, it's alive. And we have, many of us have had the experiences that even uh, following a daily ritual in our worship or in our practice can become kind of stale and then we miss this juiciness. So he is here now advising us how to keep the flow in the bhajan, means we are hearing and chanting, remembering and doing, you know, our worshipping of the Takujis, but the mind must be filled with love, means something spontaneous, something very natural is happening. And that's why we come to Vrindavan, and Vrindavan, this is here, everyone is carrying the Takujis. If you go to the temples, they have little Gopal with them. They say, I will go show Gopal this temple. They are very personal with their Takujis. It's a natural flow. And like this, because that is the mood of the Brajbasis, that Radha and Krishna are theirs. They are, you know, they are one of ours. They are my family. <laughs> And even nowadays, we see that feeling, we feel it, and we feel inspired. At home, we have our altar, we have our takajis, <laughs> but I, whenever I come to Vrindavan, I feel it is revived. I feel it is becoming again more and more alive. And that is what he is here implying also. Juicy and honey sweet. So it's not something that is done as a duty or as a ritual. <coughs> It is something, they are mine and I am theirs. It is something very natural. It is not uh, done uh, in the flow of all the, you know, how you say, rules and regulations. Because, you know, uh, any of us who has been worshipping the temple in any of the temple, uh, I mean worshipping in the temple, we know there are so many processes that you need to do to be allowed to go to the temple. Do you, do you have this experience, Dayanidhi? No? And it was a very strict thing, no? You have to do this and that and chant this mantra and you have to be Brahmana initiated, you have to be all of these things that sometimes make it kind of like far away. But here in Vrindavan, everyone is so close with uh, Radharani, with Gopali and Gopal. They are very close and they feel their relationship very juicy and sometimes Gurudev is also speaking about the love of the Brajbasis and it's very amazing from which perspective he is also uh, feeling their love with their Takujis, with their Radha Mohan, with their Gopal. One must remember that the practitioner will not be able to keep love for the lotus feet of the desired couple within their heart on his own strength. So that is like a very, very important point. Remember that the practitioner, any of us, we won't be able to keep love for the lotus feet of the desired divine couple within the heart on our own strength. Mm. Look, it, it's not possible. Mm. We cannot do it, we cannot. This must be known to be solely dependent on the grace of Sri Guru, Vaishnava and Bhagavan. Can you read again? Yes. Because we not can do it. 
Yes, I will read it. One must remember that the practitioner will not be able to keep love for the lotus feet of the desired Radha Mohan within the heart on my own strength. It must be known, we should be aware, we should be conscious that this solely, only depends on the grace of Shri Guru Vaishnava and Bhagavan, Divine Lord, Divine Goddess. So again, here we have this uh, wonderful uh, point that it's not me who's doing it. It's like the grace, the mercy of my Gurudev that I have a feeling of taste, that I have a feeling of, of juiciness and always be in this receiving thankfulness. And I know for myself, this is often um, a big blockage that I don't live in the feelings of receiving or thankfulness. I live in the feelings of uh, uh, expectations and uh, somehow trying to understand with my mind why it doesn't work. But here Baba says, it will not be able to work like that. Love comes from someone who has love. Bhakti comes from bhakti. And that is also another reason why we meet here, because we need this ignition of bhakti, like two stones. One stone cannot make fire, but two, they make the spark. So in the same way, all these feelings to, you know, feel close to Srimati Radhika, to feel close to all the processes and to feel the juiciness and to feel the honey sweetness. It's a honey sweetness. It's, it's not sour. It's not bitter. <laughs> Sometimes it is because I don't have any, you know, juice. So then I need to go to those who are juicy. And then I always feel this. When I come to Vrindavan, I feel dry. And then again, I feel more juice. Yeah. But of course, I don't say it's not possible to do it out of Vrindavan. But the thing is to be with someone who's very juicy. Internally or externally, according to my uh, capacity. That is what Baba says. It's all by grace. Radhe. Radhe, please. Sorry, sorry. Just... <laughs> Uh, I just remember actually that it is said that no one can come in Vrindavan without the mercy of Srimati Radharani. Shiradika has to give this mercy, this kripa to the person that he desires to come in Vrindavan. And maybe even if he doesn't desire, it just happened that person drop in Vrindavan. This is the mercy of Radhika. So no one can come in Vrindavan, <coughs> no one can uh, has association of Rajavasis, Rasik devotees without ultimately Radhika's mercy. So this is uh, very mysterious one way think because I am the person who is saying no, I want to go in February in Vrindavan. <laughs> No, I will change the date. I will go in March. <laughs> then I'm starting to look uh, for the cheapest flights, you know. And I'm searching, 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 and I got a headache, you know, because I understand how oh, everything is expensive. So we are going through the process when we are thinking that we are doing this. But we're forgetting one thing, that initial desire is coming deeply from Shimati Radhika in the form of Kripa to our heart. Mm -hmm. Then I am just the instrument who is trying to surf on the Google, uh, on the flights and different companies. But this desire, uh, and <clears throat> even if it's not conscious desire, mm -hmm. even if it's not conscious desire, comes from Radhika. I want to go to in India. And I'm traveling all around India and ultimately I finished in Vrindavan, you know. and then I meet Rasik devotees and other devotees. So this is all manifestation of Kripa. So uh, all uh, whatever we do, and it's very closely connected with Vrindavan, it's manifestation of Kripa. Even now, when Sunitis 
is reading what is the process, Shravana, Kirtana, Smarana, and different processes for sadhana. No one can practice sadhana, even to start to practice sadhana without kripa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We think, now I will wake up <laughs> in the morning, I will take my japa, and I will chant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. And after two days, I'm broke. You know. I cannot continue. Why? Because I don't understand that I have to be connected with the mercy, with the flow of mercy. And if we are aware that whatever we are practicing has to be in the flow of mercy, then sadhana is a very pleasant practice. And not even practice, it's a pleasant lifestyle. Oh, yes. It's a very pleasant lifestyle, because whatever I do, I do with love and consciousness that love from the other side also wants me. Because if Radhika is giving me Kripa to come to her home and to her devotees, it means that she wants me also. So love must be exchanged in the both sides. I love you, but if you don't love me, what can I do? You know? So pure love has to come uh, 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 to be nourished from the both sides. And this Kripa is actually nourishing from Radhika sides or Guru sides to the disciple, directing to his heart. And when we are conscious about that, then like Sunitiji said, then we are thankful. Why I'm thankful? Because I understand I cannot do it alone. Toilet. I need mercy. Toilet. I need connection. Wi-Fi connection. Proper connection. And my Gurudev gave me Diksha, different mantras, instructions, so he gave me password. That's all. He gave me from his side that I can continue to go in my spiritual search or spiritual practice, finally to the ultimate goal. So without Radhika, without pure love, no one can advance in his spiritual life. Through the rituals, it's not possible to advance. Yes, one thing can be very advanced, false ego. <laughs> because I know so many mudras, <laughs> I know so many rituals, better than you, 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 and you. And the result of all these things is just building the more my material, physical, bodily identification. So, Gurudev today was speaking, this is the reason why it's most difficult thing to teach the Brahmana. <laughs> <laughs> because he knows everything, you know. How we, we can teach someone who knows everything? But what he knows, it's not from his soul, it's from his mind, intellect, not from his soul. And he's very attached to the rituals. But we need here attachment from the heart. Then all these things which we are doing have completely another color, color of love. Same activity. Worshipping, for example, Radha Mohan, someone can do it like a ritual. And someone is doing with the love. Externally, same activity. But like Sunitiji said, but what is in the heart, feelings in the heart, is something what different devotee or religious person who are doing just to fulfill ritualistic duties. Right. That's what I wanted to say. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Smriti. <coughs> yes, oh, okay, it's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, just in the context. No, 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 no. I see now. 
in the context of what, what said and speak up because mm -hmm. we also need to listen <clears throat> in the context of what said Goranga Sundar and also what you was reading now so uh, if one want to be uh, conscious of Ishtadeva he depends on other devotee of the mercy of <laughs> Ishtadeva again of the gurus but ultimately it is also one question and to understand how it's working uh, we need the sadhus the rasika bhaktas but ultimately they also think that depend on another so what is the reality reality is that everybody depends of uh, uh, in the from the point of the heart like he said this is the vision Yes. Vision is like that, and the, from from the point of the mind, different visions is ego visions, like you said. I think so. it's the it's the the love for each other and the desire that um, make us give us this support, huh? Because um, when I read Chaitanya Charitamrita again and again and again. The part where Lord Chaitanya is giving mercy to Rupa Goswami, he said, I met him and I liked him. <laughs> so everyone in spiritual world depends on love. Yeah. Krishna depends on love. Radhika also depends of love. Although she is the fountain of love, source of love, mm -hmm. she depends of oh, his love also, because to whom he, she will give love. Mm -hmm. She depends the, of the love of her girlfriends, Sakis, mm. especially Manjaris. Manjaris are depending on her love and the love of elders also. And this is the exchange of complete, complete exchange of complete pure love. So this is real dependence. Otherwise, we come in the, on the level of independence, and this is conditional life. When we want to be independent, especially in the love, then it's very heavy thing. Can you imagine you want to love someone and at the same time you want to be independent? <laughs> It doesn't work so well. <laughs> it really doesn't work so well. So we need to submit ourselves to the, our love. And this is the special rule, let's say rule, in Vrindavan, in the land of pure natural love. Everyone to be submitted to the love, because in that way he can receive the more and give the more. Like a, a waterfall. If you are standing, the waterfall is just falling on you. But when you lie down, then all the, you can catch all drops with full strength because you are completely down. So it means we, when we are down, we can catch, we can receive all love which is necessary. And Krishna is expert in that. <laughs> Krishna is really expert in that because he is putting Radhika's lotus feet on his head. Mm. He is kissing her lotus feet. Krishna is doing this. He is showing us what is the love. God is doing this. I am servant of my love. I'm, I want, because this is the best position, <laughs> to be servant of the love subdued completely to the loved. If he becomes God, he cannot receive so much love. Then he, he is the giver, no? Then he is a giver. He has to, but now he is completely <laughs> stealer of the love. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in very humble way. Stealer, but in the humble way. Because he knows, in that way I can steal the most. <laughs> <laughs> Really? This, this is psychology of Vraj Prem, Vraj Love. We should understand the psychology of that. And this is the last limit of personalism. And Vrajavasis can teach us. They are expert. In they that. are expert. 
if you allow me, I just remember one story, life story. Yes. From Raja. There was one girl, I don't know, 10, 12 years, something like that. And she never <clears throat> left Vrindavan in her life. She was born in love, raised in Vrindavan, and she never left Vrindavan. But she had some relatives who were living outside of Vrindavan in different parts of India. And these relatives one day came in Vrindavan to visit the family and also her. And in one moment, <clears throat> they said to her, you know, we are on our pilgrimage all around the different holy places, and we would like to take you with us. Because we know you don't know anything except Vrindavan. You never have been outside of the You don't know how India is looking like. Mountains, lakes, different temples. You know, so we want that you come with us and don't worry, we will care about you. And then she said, yes, thank you very much. I understand your proposal, but I cannot leave Vrindavan. And they said, why you cannot leave? You will come back in 10 days, 15 days. Okay. Yes, I will come back. But in the meantime, what my Radhika will do without me? <laughs> What my Radhika will do without me? We always think, what I will do without Radhika? <laughs> but this is Raja mood. What she will do? Who will take a care? Who will give her water? Who will make a garland? Who will change her clothes five times a day if, if she wants? <laughs> what she will do without me? So this is the pure love. And all is possible in Raja. Mm. Life story. A real story. <laughs> real story. <laughs> what Radhika will do without me? So this is the essence. I am yours, but you are mine. Jai Ho! Thank you, Goranga. Sundar. I also would like to, to share a life story. Yes, please. From Munga Mandya. There is between three and four o'clock in the afternoon, there is such a sweet and nice mood. We are all in the process, doing the arati, listen to each other, being with Guru Dev, all engaged. <laughs> and then there is one hour, we had some rest, now slowly coming out of the rooms. It is so Peaceful, serenity, gelassenheit, ne? serenity. Um, some are singing to the gurus, so sweet and nicely, uh, singing in the temple, sweet and nicely. Some do have some exchange with, with, with each other, distributing sweets, some are walking, chanting. Even the monkeys are peaceful. The mm. birds are peaceful. And then there's such a gentle, lovely summer breeze all around, embracing, going away. So I think this is like in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> you fell in love. Oh, the, the children's, uh, the, 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 the Pujari um, is distributing chai. Some, uh, the Indian is sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. Sweeping, yes. Yeah. The, the store are open. There's some exchange. So really a beauty, beautiful <laughs> mood. <laughs> so <laughs> French. <laughs> Jai ho. So this point is now further. Explained again by citing Srila Rupa Goswami part in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the only and paramount cause of the attainment of Raga Nuga Bhakti is the grace of Sri Krishna and his pure devotees. So again, same, you know, sometimes it's that Sri Guru, 
But actually, you know, Sri Guru and Sri Radhika and the pure devotees and Sri Krishna, they all like a, you know, divine uh, team. Divine team to, to help all souls who are attracted to come closer and to feel like you were expressing the sweetness, the sweetness of the feelings they have, you know, even that I could feel my Vaishnavas, my brothers and sisters, my, you know, Gurudev, that is, I feel already such a grace to feel each other. It's already a grace because I know also moments where I cannot feel anything, where I'm not, you know, like receive, you know, in the, in the mood of reception. These moments we also know when I'm only in my internal problem solvers, solving modus or whatever, self-absorption problems, you know, then it's sometimes very difficult to feel others. But when we have this sweetness, this, you know, kind of soft heart is not so much problems, is not so much sorrow, but then, you know, the sweetness is becoming more and more and more and gradually, you know, the whole feeling of sweetness is, it seems to be everywhere. Why is it so, Sudevi? Because you feel it because you got it. Even that is a grace. Yes, it's is true. it? Yes. Because we also have these moments where we wake up and then we feel, this is the harsh reality. <laughs> I am sick. You know, and then everything seems to be so uh, not so sweet, you know, depending on my low consciousness. So this also that to feel the grace is also to feel the sweetness, to feel these details of the moods of the whole Monge Mandir yet now where we are and to feel the different different exchanges sweet so grace is uh, amazing grace amazing grace is when these things happen in my life that I could never produce by myself never produce and never control but I have desired them probably at one point. So the desire will lead also to the grace. And then another point before, because today we have only one hour, right? And then the kirtan will start. So that's why I'm a little bit... <laughs> but that, because I want to uh, exchange this with you because it's really sweet. By the grace and through the association of like-minded Raganuga devotees who are fixed in bhajan, a fortunate practitioner, practitioner continues his Raganuga bhajan and as a result of serving like-minded Sri Guru and Vaishnava, this person will gradually be infused with a corresponding amount of grace that his mind and heart will be showered with the juice of love for the divine pair. I thought, wow, this is, this is the sentence I repeat. <laughs> it's about infusion. It's, the infusion is receiving the grace. And it's like a spiritual infusion, no? infusion. <laughs> By the grace and through the association of like-minded Raganuga devotees who are fixed in bhajan, a fortunate, a very lucky practitioner continues their Raganuga bhajan and as a result of serving like-minded Sri Guru and Vaishnava, this person will gradually be infused with the corresponding amount of grace that the mind and heart will be showered with the juice of love for the divine pair. So, First of all, we get the grace and the association 
of those who want to fall in love with Sri Radhika and Radha Mohan. That is already in itself the grace. And we get not only any association, we get those association of devotees who are very absorbed, who are really like one-pointed, fixed, no? stay bath. And then, by the mercy of this kind of association, I do my own bhajan. I also continue in my own meditation, in my own feeling. And then, the result will be service. See, first we have Satu Sangha, right? And then it will be, you know, what is the, the reason, what is the means, what is the goal? We serve each other and we serve Radha Mohan, we do something. We clean and we cook and we, you know, sing and we dance and we learn and we, you know, many, many services. Just go in Gurudev's room and you see how many services are given and are also received daily. It's a very natural thing. So that service of the Sri Guru and Vaishnava will gradually infuse an amount of grace that the mind and the heart will be showered with the juice of love for the divine pair. So that is, a, I think it's a gist, it's like an essence of how mercy and grace and love work together and how they are developed. If you can repeat again from the beginning, please. Mm -hmm. By the grace and through the association of like-minded Raganuga devotees who are fixed in bhajan, a fortunate practitioner, sadaka, commences, means goes on, his Raganuga Bhajan, and as a result of serving like-minded Shiguru and Vaishnava, this person will gradually be infused with a corresponding amount of grace that his mind and heart will be showered with the juice of love for the divine pair. Yeah, slowly but surely we reach the ultimate goal. So we are together here, we have association. But what do I do with it? I, I embrace this association and the inspiration that comes from that and I take it into my own bhajan. I sit down in my room, in my meditation, in my connection to Radha Mohan and I I, I feel it, I digest it, I meditate on it, I get inspired when I see you in your love, right? Love inspires love. So I also embrace that in my heart. And then Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas, they see also how I am eager in embracing it. I also, you know, I catch it, I am thirsty. So they again give, you know, give, give more uh, love and give more mercy. And then this, you know, this is an infusion. It's like receiving something and keeping it. It's not a leakage. A leakage is when the container of the heart has the holes. But here, what happens here in Vrindavan, and especially when we meet all together in this special mood of being so sensitive and we are vulnerable and we are eager. And then, you know, this infusion, it just, stays with us and then it can work in such a way that this grace will shower us with the juice of love for the divine pair. So that is, and then uh, another Tom Das Taco says, I have to watch, I will serve the divine pair with a love showered mind. That is the love showered mind. I cannot produce it by myself. I have been showered by all of you and by Gurudev and by, you know, all those who feel showered and who are under the shower. I will serve the divine pair with a love showered mind. 
and I will similarly serve the deities and meditate on them. And that is the that is the Raganuga Bhakti. It's a love showered mind. It's not a mind that is pressed or tortured by, you know, trying to learn so many rules and rituals. It's a mind that's showered by love. And the means is to receive that love and to also share the love more. And in that process of receiving and sharing and uh, giving all of it to Radha Mohan's lotus feet by heart and mind and soul, then this will be, uh, how do you say, result in more juicy feelings for more service. Bhakti uh, is giving bhakti. And that I thought it was so, this infusion, this is so nice. Infusion, like sometimes we are diseased and then uh, uh, the body becomes so weak that we need an infusion, right? You have had this in India, sometimes you have it. <laughs> that you're like, oh my God, now I cannot get up. And then you get an infusion. And by that infusion, you can walk again, you can do your services again. And so also it is in a, in a, in a similar way that the love that we are sharing, that we are caring for each other, that we try to be a team of, you know, love and action for Gurudev, for Radha Mohan, for the whole temple, then this is so addictive and so, um, you know, it's so powerful that it can give this infusion. And Radha Mohan will be pleased because they are there, they are observing us. It's not only we are looking at them, actually, it's more important how they look at us. And then it will be juicy, and it will be um, uh, honey sweet. Radhe. <laughs> How is our Sundaram? Is he there? Yes. Oh. Radhe Sundaram. Thank you for your very nice class. <laughs> I, Jai, this is old. only the mercy of Baba and uh, our Naratam Das Thakur and Gurudev that he give me this service. So I'm happy we are all sharing together. And I hope I didn't cross uh, the time limit and you can still uh, continue with your kirtan now. <laughs>